Good morning and welcome back to the Livingston Parish News Morning Show. My name is McHugh David, publisher and editor of the news. Appreciate you guys joining us this morning. Excuse me. One second. Yep. Appreciate you guys joining us this morning. If you're watching us live, thank you for that. If you are checking us out online, please remember we do upload these shows to www.livingstonparishnews.com backslash podcast. You can check them out there. They are free. We have audio and video versions for you to check out. Getting into it today with your traffic. No train derailments today. Actually looking pretty good out there. Easy going. Uh, I-12 is flowing with some minor delays on those on-ramps. 190 looking pretty clear. Minor delays at Dunn and Lockhart, as well as some minor delays on 64 heading into Central. But again, pretty good commute this morning, not too bad, although it is a dreary day getting into your weather. 74 degrees is your current temperature, 87 your high, 75 your overnight low. Going to be a dreary day today, mostly cloudy, looking at some potential for some afternoon isolated thunderstorms. The rain is not going to roll back in until this weekend. Unfortunately, uh, we're forecasted for rain pretty much through next Thursday, so about a week worth of it, and it is, it's going to hang around until, uh, again, next Thursday, looking at highs in the 80s, uh, high 80s over the weekend, as well as lows in the mid-70s. Good morning, Miss Michelle, and good morning, Mr. Todd. Thank you all for joining us this morning. The Hampstead Stage Company will be presenting a special performance of Alice in Wonderland that's going to be on the Facebook. Uh, library's Facebook page at 10 a.m. That's going to be an interesting performance trying to, you know, normally these are activities that you read about later because they happen at the library, but because of coronavirus, they're going to be happening live and in your face. Again, the Hampstead Stage Company performing Alice in Wonderland live on the library's Facebook page. That is going to be at 10 a.m. Good morning, Mr. Mike. Thank you for joining us. Please remember that early voting continues. It's happening every day from 8.30 a.m. to 6 p.m. It is at the Dim Springs Walker branch of the library as well as uh, the Registrar Voters Office in Livingston. Uh, Please go vote. This is your primary election. There's also a vote uh, for, excuse me, Albany Police Chief has a race as well as an appellate court judge race. Uh, Judge Rick Swartz. Uh, is a, running against Judge Beth Wolf. Of course, Miss Beth Wolf is from here. Mr. Rick Sports is from the North Shore. So uh, please keep that in mind. That race is going on. Of course, you also have your primary races for president as well as your executive committees for Republicans and Democrats. Please remember, in your primaries, you can only vote for your party. So if you're Democrat, you can only vote for Democrats. Republican, only vote for Republicans. You can, of course, vote for whomever you want later in the fall. Budget and spending bills are starting to kind of flow through finally, getting out of committees and onto floors and getting amended. Uh, Something yesterday that came up, or probably more like Wednesday afternoon came up, uh, was some disagreements about changes to the Medicaid system and how it works through the Louisiana Department of Health. Uh, Legislators want it to work more closely with following the patient, uh, as well as the Louisiana Department of Health. However, some legislators Uh, believe that it could cause uh, some severe financial issues for hospitals in their area. According to Commissioner of Administration Jay Darden, that is not the case. A lot of those hospitals will find revenue in other places uh, and are also eligible for different types of funding uh, from the government. But the the state is trying to pare down uh, on the amount of Medicaid spending that occurs, trying to focus more on uh, charging by the patient and following the patient's rap sheet as opposed to, I guess you can say, Uh, large dedicated bills that are sent per patient basis. So we're going to see, we're going to see how those changes work. uh, And if they do kind of lower some of that Medicaid spending that we do have here in Louisiana, getting into your coronavirus statistics real quick, 53,415 cases, 3,051 deaths, 39,792 have recovered on 660,000 tests. There are 653 people currently hospitalized with coronavirus on 77 ventilators. In Livingston Parish, 794 cases, 36 deaths on 10,700 tests. Want to remind folks of these mitigation efforts, just real quick, wash your hands with soap and water for 20 seconds or more. Disinfect common surfaces at the home and at the office. Wear a mask in public, if at all possible. Don't touch your face, my favorite one. 
Uh, control sneezing and coughing with an elbow or a tissue. Six feet or more of distance between yourself and others. 25 or less to a gathering. And stay home if you're sick. Utilize telehealth to get in touch with your doctor. And stay home if you're sick to work. A group of Republicans has gathered uh, at the Capitol behind uh, Representative Alan Seaball, who is from the Shreveport area, uh, to try to again get a petition signed to remove the governor's emergency declaration. I do start. I'm apo- I apologize for that. We've had some internet troubles. I, I lag out a little bit every now and again, uh, but we do have um, uh, this group is once again getting back into the forefront, trying to get this petition signed, trying to get that emergency declaration removed. Still not a real dedicated answer from anybody as to whether that would make the state ineligible uh, for federal funding and federal disaster assistance, uh, considering that you have to declare a state of emergency in order to be eligible for that disaster assistance. The, the, the common sense answer is yes, but as we all know, uh, dealing with government sometimes, we're not sure if that's common sense or not. But that has been the argument from the governor's office and a lot of other legislators is we can't do that because if we do, we will make the state ineligible for some of these disaster recovery dollars that should be coming uh, down later. And of course, will affect the budget, which is why the legislature believes that they will meet again in the fall. So uh, that's something that's that's cropped back up. We're going to see uh, if, if it goes anywhere. It did not really uh, catch any legs the first time. Only about 30 total legislators uh, signed up for it. It looks like it's about the same crowd this time. Uh, so probably not going to go anywhere, but I, I'm not entirely sure. But of course, the main argument against it is that it makes uh, the state ineligible if they were to cancel it or find a way to cancel it uh, for those federal disaster aid dollars. So we will see. 1.5 million new unemployment claims were filed as of the end of last week. So remember, these run... Uh, a week behind uh, per Department of Labor guidelines, as well as trying to make sure that the tally is correct. Livingston Parish, now that is nationwide. In Livingston Parish, you're looking at roughly 8,000 uh, total unemployment. So that's much better than it was at its peak when it was up near 17,000, 18,000. Uh, <clears throat> excuse me. 50% of the part time and hourly wage workers, mostly restaurants and things of that nature, are currently on unemployment because of uh, COVID, and it'll be interesting to see how quickly those folks do uh, come back uh, into the system, I guess you can say. Now, one of the concerns of the Baton Rouge Area Chamber, as well as Louisiana Association of Business and Industry, is that in a month, roughly, uh, they will run, or the federal additional benefit for unemployment will run out. Uh, Now, they may extend that, we're not entirely sure yet, but as of right now, it runs out on July 31st. That's an extra $600 a week. So that would be a huge amount for most people, $2,400 worth of unemployment removed. So one of the things that both BRAC and Lobby are saying is that we have to find a way to get these people back to work in the next month or as many as possible. In just the Baton Rouge metro area, you're looking at roughly 60,000 unemployed. Uh, so trying to find a way to get those folks back to work. The biggest concern is... Uh, You know, the chance, I guess you can say, for, uh, you know, some devastating results uh, for the retail industry as well as uh, landlords and lenders. So, you know, a lot of people are going to suddenly start abandoning their leases, not going out to shop. Uh, Now, it's not everybody, but it will be a lot of people. And, of course, those people spend money. Then those next people spend that money and that sort of thing. So it, it becomes a problem, especially with that level of unemployment. So going to be keeping an eye on that. It is important uh, that as many of those people try to get back to work as possible. And of course, for some of them, it's, you know, some people have chosen not to go back to work because of coronavirus and, they, and they're concerned about their health. And some people just haven't been able to go back to work because either the business completely closed or has not reopened fully yet. So we're going to see uh, how things pan out over July 30 or over the 31 days in July. But looking at that July 31st deadline on unemployment enhancement benefits and saying, we got to figure something out here in the capital region is the recommendation of Bracken Lobby. So we're going to find out what happens. Now, the Wall Street Journal editorial board did say that many states, which are, I guess you can say, uh, lagging behind uh, some of the larger states that the recovery is partisan, uh, that mostly Democratic states, with the exception of Massachusetts, 
um, have in enacted heavier handed, um, I guess you can say, restrictions while uh, having a slower economic recovery. So uh, kind of going to kind of see if that t pans out over this entire pandemic or if it's just sort of a snapshot as of right now. Uh, of course, in a lot of places, including our own, uh, there are spikes in cases, including Florida, Georgia, and Texas, which had some of the more loose and relaxed restrictions. Of course, uh, you know, but you're looking in some of these places uh, that are Democratic uh, that do have higher unemployment. So it is going to be interesting to see uh, what happens over, uh, you know, especially during this last month. It's a very big month nationwide as well uh, to see who, uh, you know, who will get their job back, who won't, what kind of business, how many more businesses will go out and where that leaves us when those unemployment benefits run out at the end of July. An interesting story out of the Holden area, Miss Nancy Hutchinson and Missy Wild sewed a bunch of specialty masks for the Holden High graduates. You can see them on our website, www.livingstonparishnews.com backslash coronavirus. They, uh, they all wore them for their graduation. Now, these ladies took it a step further, got together with four of their friends, and sewed about 6,000 masks over the past couple of weeks. Uh, of course, uh, about 47 of them went to Holden graduates, and then the rest went to healthcare professionals in the region. So they uh, thank, thank you to those six ladies who worked very hard uh, during the coronavirus to ship that stuff out. Uh, I know we appreciate it. Uh, I know those healthcare workers appreciate it, and I know those healthcare workers' families appreciate it. So thank you for taking that time. And thank you for sewing it for those graduates. I was at the Holden High graduation. They were pretty cool. On one side, it said Class of 2020, and on the other side, it had the school logo, and it said Rocket. So it, they were very cool. And they, of course, were the Holden color. One last time with your coronavirus statistics, 53,415 cases, 3,051 deaths, 39,792 have recovered, 660,000 tests have been performed, 653 are hospitalized and 77 ventilators. 794 cases in Livingston Parish, 36 deaths and 10,700 tests. Now, I did just get a text. Somebody was asking about the train derailment yesterday. Uh, the reason Hazmat came out is because fuel did leak out of one of the cars. And of course, while that is not necessarily specifically dangerous, uh, it does have environmental effects and it is considered a hazardous material. So they did have to come out there, clean that up, Still trying to figure out exactly why the train derailment occurred. Uh, there have been a couple of different reports trying to get a final uh, report from the Walker Police Department. But as soon as we have that, you guys will know. Uh, but again, that train derailment was cleaned up, probably finished up about 10 a.m. And the roads did reopen. Uh, as of right now, they're saying that um, one resident did have to be evacuated from the area briefly while they cleaned up that stuff and then was let allowed to go back, I guess you can say. And then, of course, the uh, two individuals in uh, the lead car were not injured. So there were no injuries reported, and that's always a good thing when you have anything like that. So I wanted to let you guys know, we do have some more information coming in on that. It's coming in slowly, so we'll see how that works out. Getting into the traffic, minor on-ramp delays at uh, Range Avenue. Juven Road and 447, but not too bad this morning. I-12 is flowing. No derailment again. Minor delays on 64 heading into Central and minor delays at Dunn and Lockhart in the roundabout. Currently 74 degrees, 87 degrees is your high, 75 your overnight low. Uh, it's going to be cloudy today, potential for some uh, nighttime or evening thunderstorms, uh, but it's going to be rainy over the weekend with highs uh, near 90 and lows in the mid-70s, but it's supposed to start raining tomorrow. And it's going to rain on and off through Thursday. We'll see if that remains consistent. Uh, Mr. Mike Harris, um, how long will this Saharan dust hang around? I'm not entirely sure. The first plume has hit. Uh, there is a larger gathering of it coming. Uh, it depends on how favorable that wind is. Uh, probably at least four or five days. Uh, if you watched the track of it moving across the Atlantic, coming into the Caribbean and that kind of thing, it took it a while to get here, uh, and it'll take it a while to go away. Um, now, a while is relative. For some people, four and five days may not be that big of a deal. Uh, but that's a good question. Uh, again, there's one little plume that hit, and there's a larger one coming up. Uh, anywhere from four to five days is about how fast that's moving. Uh, so we'll, 
we'll have to wait and see just exactly what happens. Of course, if it hits storm cells and things like that, uh, could you know could be removed from the air quicker. Moisture is going to help that drop out of the atmosphere. And Miss Joan, hey, you have a great weekend as well. Uh, thanks for joining us th on this Friday. And one last time, my name is McHugh David, publisher and editor of the news. Appreciate you guys joining us on this Friday show. Please remember that we are on Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn, Instagram, and YouTube. We are once a week in print on Thursdays. Uh, that is $7 a month. We are also online, www.livingstonparishnews.com. And we also have a podcast page, which is free, a coronavirus page, which is free, and a breaking news page, which is free, where you can find legislative information. We do hope you have a great weekend. Please start it. Please try to stay dry, and we will be back with you Monday morning.